Hi guys, I'm Will from Pryor and today I'm going to be showing you how to set up your split board using the Puck system. There's a couple of different mounting kits you can get. There's the Puck kit, which will be for use with the Spark R&D Tesla system, such as the Afterburner or the Magneto. There is the Universal kit for use with pin bindings, such as the Spark R&D Burner or the Blaze or the Volley Light Rail. And then there's the Partial kit, which is for use with a traditional snowball binding. The reason all these Puck kits differ is because of the parts you get with them. With the partial kit, you get these plates and the pin, which you will mount a normal snowball binding to, a normal four hole binding to, and mount it to that, which will then slide onto your pucks. With the universal kit, you get extra toe and heel pieces that you don't get with your Spark R&D burner or blaze. And with the puck kit, all you get is the pucks and an alignment guide, because the toe and heel pieces come in the box. So today I'm going to show you how to set up with just the puck kit for a spark magneto binding. So I'm using a prior BC split but the same applies to most other split boards with probably the exception of anything with the Burton channel. So now I'll show you what's inside the box with the spark R&D magneto bindings. So we have a left and a right binding you're also going to have the toe and heel pieces. There's the heel seats. You also get your hardware. Sticker, very important. Sandpaper in an envelope. And last but not least, a multi-tool with everything you need to fix your bindings in the back entry. Okay, so I've opened up the bag and this is what you should have inside. You should have puck mounting screws, four puck gaskets, four pucks, two puck discs with parallel slots, two puck discs with inline slots, and a puck alignment guide. Now, on a traditional puck kit, all the pucks will be the same. I'm actually showing you today with a canted puck kit, so the, the pucks will come in two pairs. So, grab the gasket and slide it into the appropriate holes in the puck. Now this is a little tricky, so don't get worked up too much if you're having a bit of trouble with this. What you can do is once you get it started, you can finish it off by pushing it flat down onto the board. Once you have all the gaskets in place, it's time to lay out a rough stance on your board. Now, if you have the traditional puck kit, the pucks are interchangeable and you can lay them out wherever you like. If you have the canted puck kit, you need to make sure that the cant on each puck pairs up accordingly. The traditional pucks are dead flat, but as you can see, the canted pucks actually have a three degree angle. I'm a regular rider, so this is the nose, this is the tail. Obviously, same applies for goofy riders. Just make sure you're setting your stance up how you want it. So I got a tape measure. I run my stance at 23 and a half inches. So I'm gonna roughly lay out where I want these pucks to suit my stance. It doesn't have to be exact yet, we're gonna finalize it later on. So you'll notice all of these slots are actually asymmetrical. So this slot is nudged towards the A side. So the A side is slightly narrower than the B side. Now what I have noticed for a variety of bindings, that if you use the inline slot pucks on your heel side, and if you put the B You'll see there's an A and a B, but we use the B side closest to the center split. That nudges the pucks towards your toe side. That will give the appearance that the pucks are actually nudged quite far towards your toe edge. But once you slide your bindings on, you'll see the binding will actually sit really nice and centered on your board, and you won't get too much toe or heel drag. Same for the parallel slot pucks. You notice the, the slots are actually nudged towards one side, so this piece is thicker than this piece. Now you might have to play around with this depending on where you want your stance. You may have to flip this around to get it to work properly. But for your first setup, we're just gonna have to try one way and see how it, see how it lines up. So I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna set this one up 15 degrees. Next, we're gonna grab our puck alignment guide. Slide this over. Make sure our pucks have stayed at our desired angles 
and we're going to screw them down. Now don't screw these in all the way just yet, just get them started. It's also worth taking note that you can actually move the parallel slot around without affecting where the marks are, so you've got to be really careful that the screws are lined up and nice and square. The other thing you're going to want to make sure is that your board is nicely put together because whatever state the board is in when you screw this puck down is going to be what state the board is in when you slide the binding on. Okay, once you're happy, the screws are aligned in the puck and your board is together, you can finish tightening your pucks down. Remove the guide and just double check the pucks are tight and that your board is nicely together. So next thing we're going to do is grab your tape measure and I'm going to measure from the center of my first set of pucks. So I want a 23 and a half inch out, so this looks a little wide. So I'm going to just push that center out to 23 and a half inches. Now in this case, it looks like my holes are lining up perfectly. If they weren't, you can turn this one completely around back to 15 degrees, or whatever your stance is, and then you have room for micro adjustment. Now this is quite important if you set your bindings up on the front with the inline slot on your heel side, you need to use it the exact same way around on this one. So in this case, I use the B closest to the center split. So I'm gonna do the same on this one. The reason for that is you want your bindings to be sat the same on both feet. If you don't do that, you might have one slightly more forward and one slightly more back. So I'm gonna set this up. I'm gonna set this up to 15 degrees. And then same on the front. Again, you might have to play around with this, put it in one way or the other to suit your stance. But I found most of the time trial and error works just fine. Once you're happy that the screws are nicely parallel in the parallel slot and your board is together, you can finish tightening down the pucks. Like so. Remove the guide. Once again, just check your pucks are uh, in the right place. If you like, you can double check your stance width. So that's perfect. And now we'll move on to installing the bindings. We'll start with the toe and heel pieces, which should be in the box. Really simple. Toes have three screws each. Heels have two. The heel also has a little arrow on it, which points towards the front of the board. Next, you need your hardware. There are six long screws and four short ones. The short ones are used for the heel and the long ones for the toes. So determine which are which, because they all come in the same bag, it's pretty obvious. And go ahead and mount them onto your board. So I'm using the short screws on the heel. They don't need to be aggressively tight, just nice and snug. You'll know when they're tight because there won't be any play left in your heel. If you find that you can actually move your heel a little bit, you've probably used the long screws on the heel. Okay, so those are tight. Now onto the toes, they are both the same, so don't worry, there's no left or right. And we're gonna screw those on. Same again, just nice and snug. You don't need to over tighten anything. They do have a bit of Loctite on them, so they shouldn't vibrate out. But it's not a bad idea to check them from time to time to make sure everything's nicely snug. So once you have your toes, heels, and pucks all attached to your board correctly, it's time to make sure your binding slide on to the pucks. So let's try this. Sometimes they don't go on so easy. That one went pretty good. Try this one as well. So those both slid on pretty easily. Um, I have set up hundreds of these and it does every now and then take a lot more effort to slide them on. So what you're gonna wanna do is take the piece of sandpaper that uh, they supplied you with 
and sand down the tops of these pucks. It's not the sides, you just need to sand down the tops until your binding slides on nice and easily. If it's difficult to do in your living room, it's gonna be impossible to do in the backcountry. So spend the time, make sure they slide on nice and easy. Um, I have in the past used a pretty heavy duty file to take off material. Um, but yeah, just make sure they go on as easily as that. And uh, once you're at that point, your split board's set up, ready to go. Uh, hopefully this video made it a bit easier for you guys to set up your split boards. And uh, all going well, we'll see you out in the backcountry. Cheers. The arsonist has oddly shaped feet. <laughs> <laughs>